Chris Boyd has spent more time dispatching balls into the back of nets this season than attempting to gaze into crystal versions of them. Frankly, without the gift of foresight, no one truly knows what the future will hold for Rangers under the tutelage of Steven Gerrard. Asked to assess the likelihood of a managerial rookie turning around a footballing behemoth that's presently wounded and on its knees, however, the former Ibrox striker speaks in pragmatic, logical terms. If Rangers said they were signing Jose Mourinho as a player, there would be outrage, the Kilmarnock man offered. He's a world class manager. Steven Gerrard is getting away with it because he's a world class player, but he's not been tested in the management side of it. For a support that has seen one bad decision compound the previous one of late, this concern is at the heart of the matter. With 114 England caps, eight major honours, and more than 500 games to his name, the pedigree of Gerrard the player is beyond all dispute. From Bobby Charlton to John Barnes and from Alan Shearer to Frank Sazi, though, History shows that such laudable achievements are an irrelevance once the boots are on the peg. Graham Morty, a vastly experienced player, who, admittedly, didn't enjoy quite the career of Gerard, found the unforgiving glare of the old firm was no place for an under 20s coach to learn his trade. Perhaps Gerard will find the skill set more interchangeable and take to the task like a duck to water. If he does, he will be an exception rather than the rule. I don't think Rangers are a club to develop a manager, added Boyd. They need someone who's been over the course and distance and who knows how to get the players on side, who knows the club and knows how to get everybody pulling in the one direction. I'm not saying that Steven Gerrard can't do that, but for me, looking at it right now, it's another risky appointment as he's never managed before. There are jobs you can learn in. There are clubs who will allow managers to learn and develop. That's what they are looking at now to develop a manager. I just don't see where it's going. You are going from, trying to get the, tried and tested Derek McInnes, who has done really well in Scotland, to grabbing a youngster who's never managed. I don't see the direction the club is going in. In the short term, with games against Boyd's Kilmarnock, Aberdeen and Hibernian to come, the next staging post might well be fourth place in the Premiership. Much has been made of late of Morty's questionable tactics in the three most recent games with Celtic. But the truth of the matter is the gap in quality is gargantuan. A Sky Sports analyst for Sunday's 5 0 hounding by Celtic, Boyd believed a double figure final score was a distinct possibility with 53 minutes gone. I know Brendan Rodgers and Bruni, Scott Brown, said it could have been 8 or 9, he said. You might have been kind saying 8 or 9. When I looked at the semi final, I thought there was a lack of effort from the Rangers players, a lack of desire to go and close them down. On Sunday, I actually didn't think it was the case. I think they did try to get in their faces. They did try to stop them and the majority of players did not but Celtic were just way too good. When they play the way they did in the first 20 to 25 minutes, you are never going to stop them. The performance on Sunday reminded you so much of the way they went about it last year. If only Celtic was the long and the short of Rangers problems. It's not just Rogers' side who have wounded them this season. It's been Hibernian and Motherwell. And the Dundees, Kilmarnocks and St. Johnstones of this world. Remarkably. They have lost 10 league games, 7 of them at Ibrox. There are a lot of Rangers players living in fear, said Boyd. I don't think it is just from Sunday. Rangers have spent a lot more money than everybody else. But, they have won just 4 games against Kilmarnock, Aberdeen, Celtic, and Hibs this season. That is not good enough. They should be miles ahead in second. For a support long since demoralized, the weekend capitulation marked a new low. There may, indeed, had been no meaningful words of consolation that could be delivered in the aftermath. But that isn't to say someone in the visiting camp shouldn't have tried. For Boyd, the fact not a single member of the coaching or playing staff volunteered to voice a few apologetic platitudes spoke volumes about the plummeting standards throughout the club. I think it's disappointing. It's not Rangers, he said. There's always been class inside the building. Without question, a man of Gerard's standing will go some way to rectifying that. Once the media circus has left town, though, and the Liverpool legend begins the Herculean task of turning the stricken tanker around. What he has done in his career up until this point will fade into the background. Who knows? With serious financial backing, an enviable contacts book, and a fair wind at his back, the man who famously dragged Liverpool back from the brink in Istanbul might just prove an inspirational choice. Boyd lives in hope of that happening. His expectation differs. It's not as if there's a plan and a direction of where they want to go, he added. For me, they are just trying to grab someone to get a headline out of it. It's wrong. The club should have a structure in place. The big problem is they have had to rip it up and start again every six months. They have one transfer window and then another one when they change it again. You could start writing the headlines for the same time next year. As soon as the season tickets go on sale, there are headlines to be made.
that is where Rangers are at this moment in time. I think the fans deserve to know exactly what is going on. They keep being told the club will turn and it will go back to what it was. But it is arguably worse than it was two years ago. Chris Boyd was speaking at his inaugural charity golf day at Trump Turnberry. The Boyd charity aims to raise awareness of mental health and support those in need.